Hi, I'm Charlie Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Frederick Health Hospital. Today we're going to talk about two uh, ominous T wave abnormalities that are important to uh, recognize the Wellens T wave and the less well known uh, the Winter T wave. So, the first case is a 50 year old smoker who presented to the ED with acute onset chest pain uh, for two hours. Um, she got aspirin, nitro, and morphine but uh, she had ongoing chest pain, so you get a call from the ED. Uh, the ED physician tells you that her ECG does not meet criteria for STEMI, but she appeared uncomfortable and was still having eight out of 10 chest pain. Her rapid troponin is negative. Um, so you ask the ED uh, to uh, send over her ECG. So here is her ECG. Um, uh, V2 is a little suspicious, uh, but doesn't quite meet uh, STEMI criteria. Uh, there are these funny looking T waves uh, with upsloping ST depressions in the V leads across the precordium, and the uh, T waves also look uh, a little peaked. Uh, you see the ST depressions in the inferior leads as well, but the T waves are less peaked uh, there. So uh, you feel a little uneasy about this case, and uh, with her having ongoing chest pain and these funny ECG changes, uh, you tell the ED that you're going to take her to the cath lab. So on cat, the RCA and circumflex were fine, but here's the LED. And as you can see, it is 100% occluded proximally. Uh, there is also dye staining, uh, suggesting that this is an acute uh, thrombotic occlusion. In other words, essentially a STEMI involving the proximal LED. Boy, are you glad you took her to the lab uh, quickly. So these T wave changes across the precordium are known as the winter T waves and are considered to be equivalent uh, to an anterior STEMI. Um, Robert De Winter and his colleagues uh, first uh, described this pattern of uh, abnormal T waves in a case series of 30 patients in 2008. And it's actually quite reliable uh, for predicting LED occlusion uh, with a positive predictive value of more than 95%. Classically, uh, what you see are one to three millimeter upsloping ST depressions uh, in leads uh, V1 to uh, V6, uh, followed by a symmetric uh, tall uh, peaked T wave. Uh, there is usually a poor R wave progression, and there is also sometimes one to two millimeters of, of uh, ST elevation uh, in lead uh, AVR. Now, our patient didn't have the purely uh, classic uh, the winters, actually, but here is another uh, more classic example. Um, you see uh, the uh, upsloping SE depressions in lead V1 to V6 and the delayed R wave progression. Uh, the uh, ST changes in AVR are uh, not as prominent uh, in this ECG. And here is another example. Again, um, upsloping ST depressions across the precordium uh, with the tall peaked uh, symmetric T waves. Uh, here, the R wave progression is actually OK, uh, but we see the ST elevation in AVR as well as a reciprocal ST depressions uh, in the inferior leads. Uh, one other example. Here is uh, uh, there is more of a J point depression uh, followed by uh, the sharp upsloping uh, peak T waves uh, across the precordium. And uh, as far as I know, the molecular mechanism that accounts for the, the winter pattern is actually not uh, completely understood. Probably something that involves uh, ion channels that's uh, going to be beyond uh, my ability to uh, comprehend. So anyway, we went to work. Uh, we used an XB three and a half guide. Uh, the occlusion was very soft and easily wired with a BMW. Um, I uh, pre-dilated uh, pre it uh, with a 2.5 by 15 millimeter uh, compliant balloon. And after ballooning, the uh, flow was quite sluggish. Uh, you see some thrombus uh, in the um, uh, that is embolized into the mid LED, and there is likely a distal thrombus embolization uh, in the microvasculature as well. So essentially, we had a case of no reflow from all of the thrombus clogging up the microvasculature. So I advanced a thrombectomy catheter to the distal LED and used the thrombectomy port to uh, deliver 100 micrograms of uh, intracoronary nipride uh, to vasodilate and clear the thrombus. And on my way out, I figured I would aspirate uh, some of the thrombus out as well. 
And so flow had improved already, so I went ahead and placed a couple of overlapping overlapping stents, uh, which uh, we post dilated uh, with 3.75 and 4.0 millimeter uh, NC balloons. And uh, here we are with the uh, final angiographic result, which is uh, which I thought was uh, quite good. Um, she uh, had a real MI. Uh, her uh, troponin uh, peaked at 188 uh, nanograms per mil. Uh, and uh, the echo showed um, uh, an EF of uh, 35 to 40% uh, with uh, anterior hypokinesis, uh, pretty much uh, uh, what you would get uh, with an anterior STEMI. Um, and fortunately, uh, clinically, she did quite well uh, and uh, was uh, discharged uh, a couple of days later. Okay, um, on to case two. Um, so this patient is uh, 70 years old. Um, he has a high blood pressure and the stenting of his LED 10 years ago. Uh, he has been having stable angina for a few years, uh, which has actually been quite well controlled with uh, medications, but um, he came to the ED with uh, accelerating chest pain over the past three to four days. Uh, in the ED, um, his vitals were stable, his troponin was still pending, and the ED physician calls you, he tells you that uh, he looked pretty good actually after getting sublingual nitro, but he had these funny looking ECG changes uh, that uh, was uh, concerning. So um, here is uh, his uh, ECG. Uh, so you don't see uh, the winter T waves, but what you do see are uh, symmetric uh, T wave inversions across uh, the uh, precordium. And uh, you feel an, a little uneasy about this one as well, so you decide to uh, take him up uh, to the cath lab. So on cath, the RCA and circumflex are again essentially okay, but you notice that uh, there are these critically severe stenoses uh, at the ostium of the LED, um, in stent in the proximal LED, as well as just after the stent in the high mid LED. And boy, are you glad you took this patient to the lab as well. So uh, these uh, inverted T waves across the precordium are, are known as uh, Wellens T waves and are considered to be highly predictive of a severe stenosis uh, in the proximal LED. So Hein Wellens and his colleagues uh, first described this pattern of abnormal T-wave inversions in 1982. And it turned out to, to be fairly reliable for predicting uh, significant LED stenoses uh, with 69% uh, sensitivity, 89% uh, specificity, and a, a positive predictive value of, uh, of uh, 86% in the right uh, patient population. And also interesting uh, historical note, uh, Wellens uh, was also an author uh, in the 2008 uh, New England Journal letter, uh, which uh, described uh, the, the winter T waves uh, 26 years later. So Wellens actually described two types of T wave abnormalities. 25% um, of the patients in this series has the uh, type A pattern, uh, which involves biphasic T waves, uh, classically primarily in leads V2 and V3, uh, with a normal R wave progression across the precordium. The other 75% uh, of patients had the uh, type B pattern, uh, which involves deep symmetric inverted T waves across the precordium, uh, also with normal R wave progression and uh, no uh, uh, high uh, uh, QRS complexes that would indicate uh, an LVH pattern. Um, with time, uh, type A Wellens can actually evolve into a uh, type B uh, Wellens pattern, and it's actually now thought that these two patterns just reflect early and late time points in the same disease process. In other words, uh, if a patient prevents, uh, presents earlier, the ECG will be more like type A. Uh, if the patient presents later, uh, then the ECG will be more like uh, type B. Now, uh, remember, there are also conditions uh, without uh, severe uh, proximal LED stenosis that will mimic the uh, Wellens patterns. Uh, the classic one is uh, Takotsubo cardiomyopathy or stress cardiomyopathy or broken heart syndrome. Uh, practically, these are very hard to distinguish uh, from true Wellens because both uh, severe proximal LED stenosis and Takotsubo cardiomyopathy can produce uh, left ventricular apical ballooning that can produce these types of uh, T wave abnormalities. But uh, generally, the deep uh, T wave inversions in Takotsubo uh, are usually quite broad, um, and um, there is usually marked uh, QT segment uh, prolongation. Occasionally, uh, you'll see the same pattern in severely septic patients, but I suspect that probably is 
as a result of uh, septic patients uh, getting uh, Takotsubo cardiomyopathy as a result. You'll also see that pattern after a large uh, anterior STEMI, but that is usually because of the development of uh, apical dyskinesis and LV aneurysm that essentially mimic uh, the apical ballooning pattern uh, that you see in Takotsubo. Um, you'll see a, a T wave inversion pattern after intracranial injury as well, the so-called uh, cerebral T waves. Um, however, as you can see, classically, these will look more like giant and broad uh, T wave uh, inversions. So um, here is a, a classic example of type A wellens. Um, you see the biphasic T waves in leads V2 and V3. Uh, the uh, R wave progression is normal. Um, there uh, is no um, uh, LVH. And you see, uh, uh, you'll, you'll actually here you're starting to see a little T wave inversion in lead V4 as well. Um, here you see more of a uh, transition from type A to type B. Uh, you still see the biphasic uh, T waves in leads V2 and V3. Uh, but the T wave inversion is more prominent, and you also see deeper T waves in V4 as well as a little in, T, uh, in V5. Um, the R wave progression uh, is normal. And here we see an example of type B Wellens uh, with a deep asymmetric T wave inversions across the precordium uh, with some T wave inversion in the uh, lateral leads, actually. Uh, notice that the R wave progression is still normal, and there is no LVH pattern. Okay, so uh, for our patient, uh, we engage with a six French uh, BBU three and a half guide. I wired the LED pretty easily with a BMW. And um, since we were working so close to the ostium, I decided to protect the circumflex with the pro water as well. Um, I dilated the LED with a two and a half millimeter compliant balloon. It actually did not dilate all the way. And since we were instant, I decided to use a 3.0 millimeter cutting balloon uh, to uh, address the uh, rubbery neointima. Uh, within the old stent. After that, a 3.0 millimeter NC compliant uh, NC balloon uh, looked like it uh, did dilate uh, all the way. Here we are after stenting the proximal LED with a 3.5 uh, by uh, 38 millimeter uh, DES. Um, I thought we did a pretty good job of hitting the ostium and not gelling the circumflex. I then post dilated uh, with a 3.75 millimeter uh, NC balloon. Um, after stenting, the LED looked pretty good. Uh, we did an OCT run, uh, which showed good stent expansion and strut apposition, and there was no evidence of a stent edge uh, dissection. And uh, here is the uh, final angiographic result, which we thought was quite satisfactory. Uh, the patient did well. Uh, troponin remained negative. Uh, there was some uh, apical hypokinesis, but uh, the overall uh, EF uh, was normal and he went home uh, the next day. All right, um, so uh, take home messages. Uh, we looked at two uh, T wave patterns uh, that should give you pause uh, in the uh, right uh, patient scenario. Now, the first is uh, the winter T waves, uh, which uh, consist of an upsloping ST depression followed by uh, tall peaked uh, symmetric T waves uh, in the uh, precordial leaves. Uh, these uh, should be uh, considered a STEMI equivalent and have a very high positive predictive value for an acute uh, uh, LED occlusion. The uh, second is Wellens T waves, uh, which are biphasic T waves in V2 and V3 evolving into deep uh, T wave inversions across the precordium. And these are uh, predictive of severe uh, proximal LED stenosis. Uh, but remember that there are numerous uh, pseudo Wellens uh, scenarios as well without LED stenosis, and th these include uh, Takotsubo cardiomyopathy, sepsis, um, uh, post MI with uh, LV apical aneurysm, as well as the uh, cerebral T waves uh, after uh, intracranial injury. Thank you for watching.